we will continue with our pathogenic organisms. We are now up to fungi. So fungi are heterotrophic. They require organic material from their surrounds and they can be microscopic or macroscopic. Um, they can be single cellular or multicellular as well. They're quite of diverse range. Uh, these can be parasitic or saprophytic. So they can take nutrients from their host and be, you know, cause harm, be parasitic, or they can just live on dead matter and be saprophytic. So not all of the, uh, not all of them cause pathology on the host organism. Now these guys secrete enzymes through their cell wall to digest host tissue. They absorb nutrients directly through their cell wall. They do not have mobility. And most of them uh, affect external regions, so skin, when they are pathogenic. Now, interestingly, they are usually transmitted by spore formation, okay, via the air, the water, or contact. So you can ingest them in a number of different ways. Uh, and they are treated using antifungal creams or drugs. Fungi have many, many virulence factors, okay? They use adhesion factors in the same way that bacteria do. They promote binding to other, um, other different yeast and other epithelial cells. They have capsules, right, also common in bacteria, uh, but they have an extracellular peptidoglycan layer that protects fungal cells from phagocytosis, um, which is, you know, immune cells coming and engulfing them. They have enzyme and toxin secretion. Okay, they can already secrete different enzymes to absorb nutrients, so they can do that in a negative sense as well. They have the ability to use host nutrients, right, making them parasitic, but they also have life cycle changes. So they can change the way in which they interact in the world. They can be spores, right? Spores are very robust and can survive in very challenging conditions, or they can be um, the, the type of form or morphology that we usually see when we see things like mushrooms. Uh, this is Candida albicans. That is the organism that causes thrush, and you can just see straight away how many different virulence factors it has. Lots of different types of fungi there, but you can see direct contact is uh, the most common there, or you know inhalation of spores, which technically is direct contact anyway. All right, let's talk about protists. Protists are a large group of unicellular eukaryotes, right? Most of them anyway. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes, but, you know, they're, they're good swimmers. Most of them live in water. So they're, um, they're highly specialized. And of the 65,000 or so species that are known, only about 24 species have been known to cause disease in humans. Um, but the species that do infect humans infect hundreds of millions of people each year. So we're talking things like Giardia which will look super cute and swimmy and uh, they cause severe diarrheal illnesses. There is also Cryptosporidium and Plasmodium which is malaria. So huge numbers of people die from malaria each year. Alright, now most of the transmission of protists are through vectors and vectors are um, an, an organism that obviously transfers or delivers the uh, you know, pathogen to a different uh, organism. So Anopheles mosquito is the vector for delivering plasmodium, which is the malaria species, into humans. They are also found quite, complex, uh, quite often in contaminated water and their complex life cycles allow for these multiple hosts. So, you know, we're talking uh, human and mosquito just for malaria as well. All right, protists, virulence factors. They have these adherence factors as well to enter the host cells. They are really good at evading host immune responses. They produce all these different cell surface proteins, which are not recognized as foreign. So our body doesn't pick them up and therefore we don't engulf them and try and remove them. There's also, I'm sorry, that's in, um, that's a whole lot of malarial parasites in red blood cells. So they are evading host immune cells. They also have capsules similar to um, bacteria, and there's a capsule on this one, which is uh, uh, Trypanosome brucei, sorry, which causes African sleeping sickness, and they kind of hang out in your blood anyway, and they evade the immune response as well. Now, conveniently for malaria, the malaria um, pathogen, they have very complex life cycles, so, uh, life cycles sorry, and plasmodium is the um, actual species of the organism, but they're hanging around in that um, Anopheles mosquito, remember. So during the blood meal, that, that um, mosquito kind of inoculates that, so uh, pushes the pathogen into the human. I mean, in human, the parasites grow, they multiply in the liver cells and then the red blood cells. And the parasites grow inside the red blood cells and destroy them. Um, and they release their, you know, more little baby parasites. And then they continue in that cycle over and over. So it can be a very long-term illness. It causes fever, headaches, chills. It can be fatal in a large number of cases. Now, huge numbers of countries are afflicted with 
malaria due to the climate which enables the vector organisms. So when you're talking Anopheles mosquito, it takes a blood meal on another human, anticoagulant saliva is injected, all these kinds of things, but none of this is going to happen unless the mosquito or the vector can manage. So um, if you're looking at malaria distribution, you're looking at a similar kind of climate, uh, climactic conditions, I suppose you could say. Lots of different ones there, but you can see vector transfer, vector, 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 and contaminated water. These are our main sources of transmission. All right, last one, parasites. Parasites benefit at the expense of the host organism. They derive their nutrition from their host and they can deprive their host of nutrients to the point of causing serious disease. Um, many parasites are worms, um, but often they have complex life cycles like and having primary or secondary hosts, so multiple hosts. We can have internal or ex external parasites, so endo or ecto parasites. Uh, most species are worms or um, insects, and they live in intestines, uh, which is quite unpleasant. Um, we're also talking ticks and fleas and things like that. Um, parasites generally come in contaminated food or water. Um, you, you might see their eggs in undercooked meat. They have host organisms that you're going to come into contact with, like dogs or pets, where you can get a tapeworm from. Um, you can have direct contact with things like the ectoparasites, uh, like ticks and fleas and lice, and they can burrow in and get inside if need be. Uh, you know, these, this is the multiple organism host um, kind of pathogen. Now, in terms of virulence factors, they're slightly less subtle. They're just, you know, they can secrete different enzymes to invade your tissue. They can bite you, all those kinds of things as well. They have tough outer cuticles to hide amongst the host tissue. So often the spores can kind of embed in um, muscle tissue. So this is the trichinella parasite hides amongst um, really tightly packed tissue so that the immune cells cannot find it whole lot of different ones there and you'll see direct contact is um, a constant one there as well right that is it for those two but be aware describing these virulence factors is super important <laughs>